great. Welcome to Chair Yoga, part of our Grow With Go Go series. Um, before we get moving, just a quick reminder of what else you can access with GoGo. -Go. So in addition to these classes, you can access rides, meals, groceries, medication delivery, and home services, all by calling one number. And that number is 855-464-6872. Um, also a reminder that you have a referral code. So at the bottom of your GoGo -Go receipts, um, you have a code, you can give that code to a friend. And then once they take their first GoGo -Go service, you will both get $10 in credit after they take their first service. Uh, we also have a Facebook group. So if you ever want to continue any of these conversations online, you can find us on Facebook. All right, with that, I will introduce myself. I am Adra. I teach the yoga and the functional fitness class here at GoGo. -Go. Um, I think, sorry. My computer is, there we go, <laughs> sorry everyone. Uh, I teach the, the yoga and the functional fitness class here at GoGo. -Go. Um, what do you need today? All you need is a chair, it's yoga. Um, I like a chair without armrests, but if all you have is a chair with armrests, that's fine. I like a non-wheelie chair. If all you have is a wheelie chair, that's fine. Um, if all you have is couch, that's fine. We're mostly seated in this class. We do stand up for a few minutes. Um, probably about five minutes towards the end of class. If standing is not for you, you skip that part, no problem. If you want a more active class, the functional fitness class is more active. So just know that you do have that variety. So today's class is seated, a lot more relaxed, a lot calmer, slower. Um, and we don't have a move of the week on Friday, so I'm gonna stop that. Okay, um, I think actually someone else is pinned right now. Leo is pinned. Uh, and we're going to try and pin me. So I am your big screen. There we go. All right. So if I am not your big screen now and you want me to be, you go to the top right hand corner of your computer and there's a little square on Zoom that says view. You have to move your cursor over there for it to pop up and you can pick speaker view so that you see me as big. If um, speaker view is um, not set, you can you'll probably be in gallery view, which means you'll see everybody. So just playing around with that. You can see everyone if you want. So uh, if you want gallery view, that's fine. But speaker view, if you want me to be nice and big. Okay, I'm gonna move my mic forward so we can all hear me nice and easily. <sighs> all right, let's have a seat. Taking your seat, let's start by taking some circles with the torso. So just a reminder that this is your time and your practice. So if anything ever doesn't feel good, I want to encourage you to stop, modify it, take a break, do something else. Go ahead and circle the other direction with the torso. There's really no right or wrong here. We're just waking up the body. You are in charge of your body. So I definitely want you to listen to your body so that if anything feels funny, it's probably a sign that you should back off. All right, let's come to center. We'll inhale, pull the chest forward and the elbows back. So we're stretching the front of the body and then exhale, round the back and push the hands forward, dropping your chin, tucking your tail. Inhale, chest comes forward, elbows go back, and exhale, round. I'm gonna give you a side view. You don't need to move, I'm just showing you another way or another angle. So you're gonna continue here at your own pace, inhaling as the chest comes forward and exhaling as you round. And then make your way back to center. Release those arms along as, alongside the body. And then side to side. So it's like you're in a narrow hallway in front of you and behind you. And you don't want to touch the walls. 
So you're bending side to side without leaning forward or leaning back. And then make your way back to center. Keeping those knees tracking forward, so trying not to move the knees or the hips, you'll rotate your spine one direction, placing your hands outside of your leg or onto the chair. So just a twist here of the spine, trying to keep the lower body still. And then twist the other way. And then come back to center, releasing those hands to your lap. And we'll go ahead and close the eyes or soften the gaze to the ground. So just taking a few moments to notice how your body is feeling. We've been moving for only two, three minutes. But just noticing where are you beginning from? Where are you starting from? How does your body feel? And today we're gonna to focus a little bit extra on the breath, a little bit more focus on the breath than usual. We always have the breath following us throughout our yoga class. But today we're going to draw a little more attention to the breath. If at any point that causes stress or anxiety, you just let it go and go with the moves and don't worry about it, don't worry about the breath. So now taking a few moments to just notice where you feel the breath in the body. Maybe first to notice if you can feel the air entering and exiting the nostrils. And then maybe now see if you can feel movement in the chest. And see if you can sense any movement in the side body. So you're thinking about the side seams of your shirts. You're wearing a, a tighter shirt that just goes right along the side of the body under the armpit. Think about that upper part underneath the armpit, underneath the upper arm where the rib cage is. See if you can sense any movement there as you breathe. Maybe, maybe not. And then feel into the back body. So thinking about your entire torso, the back side where your back is. Seeing if you can feel any movement there as you breathe. Maybe, maybe not.
And then finally moving your attention to your abdomen. We'll see if your belly moves at all when you breathe. And then letting that go. We're gonna be now more specific about how we breathe. You're welcome to blink your eyes open here. We're gonna place our hands on our rib cage on either side. So we're gonna think heart rate monitor height or bra line heights. So it's just below the chest. You're gonna take your hands on either side of the rib cage. So I like to do right hand on right side, left hand on left side. Some people prefer to hug. So you could hug yourself as well. Um, but what we're looking for is to be able to place those hands on the side of the ribs so you can feel the side and the backs of the ribs as you breathe. So first, just noticing, do you feel any movement in this region when you're breathing into your hands? Do you feel any movement into the hands? And then I want to encourage you to increase your breath in that region below your hands or beneath your hands. So as you inhale, so keep your hands where they are. I'm going to move them. As you inhale, I want you to feel as though those ribs are moving out to the side, forward and back and slightly up. And as you exhale, the ribs are pulling towards each other, back to center. So we inhale, it's like a bucket handle. So if we think about a bucket, the handle of the bucket is low when you're on the exhale. And as you inhale, that bucket handle moves out to the side and up and then lowers down on the exhale. So we inhale, feel those ribs move out to the side and up. And as we exhale, it lowers back down. A few more times. Another way to think about this is the expansion is also a little bit forward and back. So it's not just to the side. We want movement to the side. We want movement forward. We want movement back. So when we inhale, it's like when we open up an umbrella, it expands, the rib cage expands in all directions. And then the exhale is when we close the umbrella. So that's sort of the action of the ribs and the action of the diaphragm. Let's just do that two or three more times. And then letting that go, letting those hands go, bringing the hands to the lap. And see if you can feel that movement of the breath without the hands now. So it's okay for there to be movement in the belly. It's okay for there to be movement up in the front of the chest, but I want the primary movement to be in that region, if possible, of those ribs. So out to the side, forward and back, and then up. It's like a 360 opening and closing. It's much harder to feel when you don't have your hands. So know that that's okay. All right, and then we'll let that go and we're gonna move our attention to our shoulders. So let's do a couple of shoulder rolls forward. So there's no specific breath here, but see if you can keep nice smooth breathing as you roll those shoulders forward. And then roll those shoulders back. Watching that you're really moving the shoulders and not the spine. So the rib cage and the spine don't move right now. We're isolating the shoulders. We're rolling the shoulders and just really moving the shoulders and the arms and not the torso. And then allow those shoulders to relax and soften, feeling almost as if those shoulders are buoyant. They're sort of floating on your rib cage. Those shoulder blades, we have these flat bones that sort of sit on the back of our rib cage. Let them be buoyant. Let those shoulders sort of float on your rib cage instead of dropping down or being really lifted. They're just floating there. Keep that float of the shoulders as you begin to rotate your head nose. So turning the head right and left, getting a little motion in the neck, moving only in a range that feels good and safe to the body. And coming back to that breath.
And then nodding the head, yes, looking up and down. Nice motion in the neck. Anything feels really tight, you can always slow down in those regions. Bring the head back to center. I'm mirroring you. Let's bring the right ear towards the right shoulder. A little side stretch of the neck. The shoulders stay relaxed here, so the shoulders don't need to creep up. Head back to center. Other ear to shoulder, side stretch of the neck. One more time each side, ear to shoulder. And other ear. Coming back to center. We're gonna move into those arms. We're gonna bend those elbows into a W shape, palms face forward. We'll inhale, reach those arms up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, bend the elbows back into that W shape, sliding those shoulder blades down and together. We inhale, reach the arms up, the shoulders can lift. Exhale, we bend the elbows and lower the shoulders. Keep going, follow your breath. So as we inhale, we feel those ribs expanding. And as we exhale, we feel those ribs dropping. Keep going. You might start to feel some heat in those arms. Next time those elbows are bent and you're in that W shape, we'll pause for a moment. We'll keep the upper arms close to the body and let those arms, those lower arms or forearms come forward in front of you like you're holding a platter. I'll just go sideways for a second. So it's a 90 degree bend here. You're holding a platter in front of you. As you inhale, those thumbs are going to reach back. The upper arms stay close to the sides of the body. We're externally rotating those arms. And then exhale, hands come back towards each other. Hold the platter. Inhale, we open up those hands. Elbows stay close to the body. Exhale, hands come back towards each other. Keep going. Next time your arms are out to the side, we'll pause and then stretch the arms out into a T position. Now we're going to flip, I'll mirror you. You'll flip your right palm to face forward, then down, then back. So that is internal rotation of that right arm. And we're externally rotated with the left arm so that left palm is facing up. So your arms are rotating in opposite directions, right? We're wringing out our arms like we're a towel, a dish rag, squeezing out all the water, and then you're gonna switch. So right palm will face up, left palm will face back. And keep going, so you're twisting, you're rotating here at the shoulders, at the forearms, upper arms, wringing out that towel of the arms. <laughs> we're just sensing that we have that motion, that movement in the shoulders and the arms. Smooth breath a few more times. And then go ahead and let that go, releasing the arms and shaking it off. We're gonna leave our upper body alone for a few minutes and move to our lower body. 
So moving our attention to our feet. Toes are going to stay down, balls of the feet down. We'll do some heel raises, alternating lifting one heel and then the other. So one heel goes up, so the knee will move upward in response to the motion of the ankle, to the use of those calf muscles. And then we'll move into some marching from here. I'm lifting one foot and then the other. If marching doesn't work for you, you can stay with those heel raises. Otherwise, moving to those heel raises or marches, either is fine. Smooth breath here. And then go ahead and even yourself out right to left. We'll let that go. We're moving into a stretch. I'll move sideways. You do not need to move. I'm just moving sideways so you can see. We'll straighten the right leg out in front of us. So nice straight right leg. Left knee is bent. We're going to point and flex through that right foot. So you'll point the toes and then flex the foot, toes up to the ceiling. So moving through that right ankle. So I'll show you with the hands. This is the motion. It's just pointing and flexing through the ankle with a straight leg if possible. Next time your foot is flexed, so toes up towards the ceiling, you'll pause and we'll inhale, lean forward a little bit. Feel the stretch intensify in the back of the leg and then exhale, sit tall. Inhale, lean forward, feel the stretch. And then exhale back away from the stretch. Keep going at your own pace, couple of times here. Next time you're sitting tall, pause, and then decide where you want to hold the stretch. So if you get enough stretch just sitting tall, you can stay there. If you need more stretch, you'll lean forward, hands can rest on your legs. If you need even more, that left forearm can rest on your left thigh and the right hand can lower to your leg. So we're looking for holding the stretch, feeling sensations in the back of the leg. Go ahead and lift your torso back up. Rebend that right knee. Windshield wiper your knees side to side. And then we'll go to the second side. So left leg straightens out in front of us. Right knee is bent. We're sitting tall. First moving through the ankle. We'll point the left foot so the toes come down towards the ground. And then flex the left foot. Toes reach up towards the ceiling. So we're pointing and flexing through that ankle. Finding motion there in the ankle and foot. Next time your foot is flexed with the toes up to the ceiling, we'll pause and hold. We'll inhale, lean forward, feel the stretch intensify, and then exhale, sit up back away from the stretch. Inhale, leaning forward, feeling a little more stretch. Exhale, backing away. Keep going at your own pace. So follow your breath. Don't worry about my speed or anybody else's speed.
Next time you're sitting tall, we'll pause, and then you can decide where you want to hold the stretch. You could hold it sitting tall if you get some stretch there. You can lean forward, resting on your hands, or you could bring your right forearm to your right thigh and reach your left hand down the leg. So any variation is fine. Nice, smooth breaths wherever you are. And go ahead and lift yourself back up, rebend the knee, or windshield wiper those knees side to side. All right. Now we're going to move into a wide stance with the legs. So you might choose to sit further forward in your chair or further back. It really just depends on the chair that you're in. So if you have armrests, you usually have to stay quite far forward to the chair. If you don't, you can scooch back if you want. You can feel a little more supported. So we're going into this wide stance. So the knees move out wide, the toes follow the knees. So watch that those knees don't drop in, that those knees are in line with those feet. You might get a little inner thigh stretch here. You can stay right here. This is just what your body needs, or we're gonna add a side stretch. So you'll lean to your right and place your right hand on your right leg knee. Maybe you stay there. Or maybe you bring your forearm to an armrest if you have an armrest. Or maybe you bring that right forearm to your thigh. If you bring your forearm to your thigh, try and keep those hips grounded. So watch that that left hip doesn't lift off the chair. That left hip stays down. That free arm can stay down or can reach out to the side, can reach up towards the ceiling, or reach overhead for more side stretch. So any position of that arm, several deep breaths. Noticing where you feel the stretch as you breathe. Two more breaths. And lift yourself all the way back up to center. Pause for a moment, maybe notice the difference right to left. And then we go to the other side. So leaning to the left, left hand on your leg. Maybe that's enough for you. If you want a little more, maybe your forearm finds an armrest, or your forearm can find your leg. That can be plenty of stretch. So maybe you stay there, make sure that right hip stays grounded so the thigh doesn't start to come off the chair. That right arm can stay down, reach out to the side, up towards the sky or overhead. Keep pressing those knees open. So watching that the knees don't start to knock in. Breathe into the side body. And lift yourself back up to center. Ooh. Pull those legs back together, shake them off. And we're moving to standing. So we'll be standing for less than five minutes. If you don't want to stand, just stay in your chair. We'll be back to seated in a few minutes. If you do want to stand, you'll get up and you'll go behind your chair. Um, if you can't get behind your chair, you can find a wall or um, a table, something that you can hold on to for balance. I'm moving sideways so you can see better. You do not need to move sideways. All right, we're going into an upside down L position. So hands come to the back of the chair or on the wall or on a table. Walk your feet back and start to bring your torso parallel-ish to the ground. So if this is not possible, 
Your torso can be uplifted more. Your knees can be bent. If it is possible, your ankles are underneath your hips. So we're getting a stretch in the backs of the legs. We're also getting a stretch in the torso. Jaws relaxed. Two more breaths here. And then lift the torso up. Walk those feet forward. We're going into a calf stretch. Keeping the left leg where it is. Left, left foot stays. Right foot steps back one to three feet. Just depends on the length of your legs. And we bend the front knee. So front knee is bent. Back leg is straight. Back heel presses into the earth. And then find your breath here. We're going to add a little movement with our breath. So the movement's just this front leg moving. We'll inhale, straighten the front leg. Exhale, bend the front knee. Back foot stays grounded the whole time. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Exhale, bend the front knee. Push that right heel, back heel into the earth. A few more times at your own pace. Next time your knee is bent, pause. And we'll step forward. Back foot meets the front foot. And we'll switch sides. So now right foot stays at the front, left foot steps back one to three feet, just depends on the length of your legs, and we bend the front knee. So the front knee is bent, both feet are planted on the ground. So if that back heel is lifted, you need to shorten your stance. You're still holding on to your support, tuning into your breath. And then we'll find some movement. So as you inhale, front leg straightens. Exhale, bend the front knee. Your arms can adjust as needed. Heels stay down the whole time. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Exhale, bend the front knee. Keep going at your own pace. So don't worry about my speed. Move with your breath. Next time that front knee is bent, we'll pause and step forward. Back foot meets the front. All right, one more standing exercise. We're moving into a chair pose. You can decide either your feet can be together or they can be separated. So whatever feels more comfortable for you. You can hold on to the back of your chair for a chair pose, but maybe move a few steps back so that just the fingertips are on your chair or on your wall or table. We'll inhale, bend the knees, finding your chair pose. So knees bend, the hips are slightly back. The knees are just behind the toes. So if you, if you look down, I want you to be able to see your toes and then straighten the legs. Inhale, bend those knees, hips go back. You can lean a little forward with the torso and then straighten the legs. If you wanna add the arms, inhale, arms reach forward, letting go of your chair. Exhale, arms lower by your side. If you need to, just keep holding on to the chair. Inhale, we bend, arms forward if you want. Exhale, we straighten, arms down. A few more. Next time your knees are bent and you're in your chair, we'll pause, hold.
and then straighten out the legs. Come on up, let's come back to our seat. So coming back to your chair. We'll move into a, a figure four stretch. So from sitting in the chair, we have lots of options. You can cross that right ankle over the left ankle and allow your knee to open wide. So we're trying to find a little rotation here in the thigh. So if that's as far as you can go, stay there. Or you're gonna cross that right leg on top of the left leg. Or you're gonna cross that right ankle on top of the left thigh. If you're close to this position, the ankle over the thigh, but not quite, you can sit up onto something. So sit higher. So either find a higher chair or maybe you sit on a phone book or a couple of pillows to give yourself a little more height that will make it a little bit easier. From here, I want us to rock a little bit forward and back, tucking and untucking our pelvis. So I'll show you, but I'll explain it as well. I'm moving sideways just so you can see a little bit better. So go ahead and let yourself lean back a little bit and round your low back, tucking your tail between your legs. And notice that that lean back reduces the amount of stretch you get in your hip. And then I want you to sit up as tall as you can and try and stick your tail. So that tailbone, try and stick it behind you, towards the wall behind you. And then tuck the tail under and then untuck, stick the tail behind you. So the movement's not really happening at the rib cage. It's happening at the pelvis and the low back. So see if you can find that. And if you can't, that's okay. All right, we're just seeing, can we find a little movement of the pelvis and noticing how that movement of the pelvis changes the stretch. And then I want you to find a tolerable position, a position where you feel the stretch, but it's not too, too intense, but you feel something and you'll go ahead and hold. You can stay upright, or if you still need a little bit more and your tail is reaching towards that wall behind you, you're welcome to lean forward a little bit as well. And, and this goes for any of the positions. So with your ankles crossed, you can play with that tucking and untucking. With your thighs crossed, you can play with that tucking and untucking of the pelvis. Go ahead and lift yourself up. If you're leaning forward, release the legs, shake them out. And we'll go to the other side. So left ankle can cross over the right ankle, letting that left knee open out to the side. So we wanna find that, that rotation in the knee moving out. You can cross the thighs, one on top of the other, or you can cross the ankle over the thigh, again, feeling free to sit up higher onto something. It's also okay if your knee comes up. Same thing here with whichever position you're in, we're gonna play with that pelvis position. So you're going to let yourself rock back a little bit, tucking the tail under. It almost feels like you're, you're slouching, but you're slouching from the lower half of the body. And then you're going to sit forward, really on top of those bones, reaching that tail behind you. And again, I'll give you a side view. So we're tucking the tail, letting the low back round, and then we're reaching the tail towards the wall behind us. And you'll find that you get a little more stretch when you're untucked. So less stretch when you're tucked under, when the tail is between the legs, and less or more stretch when you're untucked, tail reaching back behind you. So keep playing with that a few times. And then we'll pause in the untucked position. So that's when your tail is reaching behind you. You're not rounding the back. So the back is pretty tall. You can stay sitting upright, or if you need a little bit more, you can lean a little forward. But as you lean forward, you're still trying to reach that tail towards the wall behind you, or even more extreme, you're trying to reach the tail towards the ceiling. It's not gonna face that direction, but it's that idea of bringing that tail up.
Go ahead and lift yourself up, undo the legs, shake them off. Then planting the feet, sitting tall. We'll inhale, circle the arms out to the side and up towards the ceiling. Palms touch, exhale, hands move towards the heart. Inhale, arms circle out and up. Exhale, hands to the heart. One more. Inhale, arms circle out and up. Exhale, hands lower towards the heart. We're gonna let one hand rest on the chest and one on the abdomen. Close the eyes if you'd like and just take a moment to feel your breath. There's no right or wrong. We're just noticing the natural flow of the breath. And from this space of focus, take a moment here to thank yourself for taking time to take care of your mind and your body. Namaste, thank you everybody. So great to have you as always. If you have any questions, now is a good time to ask questions about class. So either the yoga or the functional fitness. If you have questions, go, go questions. The best thing to do is email go, go. Cause I usually can't answer those questions. Um, also you can change your view to gallery. If you want to see who else is here in the room. Yeah. I'm seeing some of you wave. That's fine. You're welcome to go. Um, I'm just going to hang out a few more minutes in case anyone has something they need to ask. Thank you for another good workout. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Margaret and everybody. <laughs> I just wanted to say I haven't been here before, but I enjoyed it and I thought it was worthwhile. It's with the, the sleeping arrangements and the different hours people get up in my household, I may not make it back because I take a chance on disturbing some people, but it's very worthwhile. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And this class is, is here on Wednesdays and Fridays. So anytime you can pop in, great to have okay. you. Okay, very good. Thank you. I'm seeing some waves. If you have some other questions, you can just say it. Um, yes, it's Francis. And in the beginning, maybe in the first quarter of the session, I didn't quite hear what you were doing. I thought you were working with your feet. But then later on, you actually did feet exercises. I, I'm wondering if, if you can recall you were seated. There didn't seem to be anything moving. Uh, the fact that I didn't hear you at that point is on me, I'm sure. Um, I, I don't know whether you recall um, what what you were doing, or maybe somebody else might recall. Um, Ooh, I, I don't think we were doing anything. We were doing all upper body for the first half of class. Um, but this class is recorded, so in a few weeks, it will show up on YouTube, and you can go back and, and watch it. Um, oh, good. And yeah. So, earlier classes that I missed because I, I was here last week, I could find them on YouTube. Yes. Yes. So um, on the invite that you get for this class, there should be a link there to our YouTube channel. Um, and you just go there uh, and you'll be able to find it. And I can probably, let me see, get us a, get us a link. Either V will get us a link or I will. Um, but I think if we just go to YouTube, okay. go, go. We should be able to do it. Um, now, what is the next time I, I find the scheduling uh, kind of difficult to figure out? Uh, happily, I figured out today. Uh, when When is the next, next time you're on a Wednesday? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so I'm here. Every Wednesday and Friday, at least for now, this is the schedule. I'm here every Wednesday and Friday. It's 
9 a.m. on Wednesdays uh, Pacific time, 10 a.m. on Fridays Pacific time. We alternate yoga and functional fitness. So today was yoga, which means then next week it will be yoga on Wednesday and functional fitness on Friday. So the, the way um, you just think about it is every week we're going to do both. We're going to do functional fitness and yoga. Bye-bye. So, Thank you very much. I enjoyed Thanks for being here. Bye-bye. Have a great day, everybody.